Welcome everyone, my name is Jun Lee. I'm Joshua Johnson. And welcome back to Compass Publishing's next episode of English, English Pop. Pop. Well, Joshua, what do we have lined up for this week? Well, this week, uh, we're going to talk to our viewers and everybody about extensive reading. Um, we're going to talk about graded readers. We're going to talk about how to introduce extensive reading to their students and also how to introduce extensive reading into your classroom. We're going to talk about the benefits of extensive reading and much, much more. Excellent. That actually sounds pretty good. It sounds very, very interesting. I'm looking forward to hearing some of the more information you're providing. And let's go ahead and dive right in. All right. It's English pop. So what is extensive reading? Some teachers believe extensive reading is using very long and difficult text for students to read in the class that's very challenging. Although that could be a good way to read or try to learn how to read, it's not extensive reading. Another common misconception that Extensive reading is using one text in a class and having students in the whole class read that one text. And that's also not extensive reading. So let's focus on what extensive reading actually is. And there are three aspects we're going to talk about today. The first one, large quantity. So basically we want students to read a lot of books, a lot of different texts. So it becomes like an exercise for them. They read over and over and over again and it becomes very automatic. The second aspect is level appropriate. It's very important for students to have text and books that are at the right level for the student so they're not too difficult and also not too easy. The third is selection. As you can see here, we have fiction, nonfiction, and classic. It's really important to have a wide variety of books for your students to choose from so they can be exposed to different elements uh, and different subjects, such as when they're in school. Now that Josh has provided us a background of what extensive reading is, let's go and take a look at what graded readers are. Now, graded readers are short fiction and nonfiction storybooks that are carefully developed and designed to meet the specific needs of English language learners. They are designed to keep learners interested and motivated through a tight control of the plot, vocabulary, and grammar. The content is specially written with the controlled use of vocabulary, and the grammatical structures and syllabus also increase to match the student's needs. Now, the levels of graded readers start as low as 100 words for the lower level learners. Now, what this means is, even students who only have a vocabulary spread of 100 words in English are still able to enjoy and use the graded reader programs. Greater readers from Compass Publishing include award-winning series designed to provide English language learners enjoyable reading practice through original fiction, nonfiction, and specially retold classic titles from around the world. English language learners will enjoy developing their vocabulary acquisition, grammar application, reading fluency, and overall ability through the use of these materials. Now let's go ahead and talk about setting up the proper extensive reading program in your class. Now, for this program to actually and truly work, we're going to want to focus on two different strands of the English language learning process. The first one being meaning-focused input, and the second one being fluency development. Now with meaning-focused input, this is going to be choosing the right books that are slightly more difficult than the students' levels it's going to challenge them a little bit more than their current knowledge that they actually carry. Now with fluency development, this is going to refer to what we call speed reading, picking a book that's slightly easier, having the students read, them, read through them as quickly as possible, and covering more volume as they read. Now besides these theories, we want to make sure that we're actually focusing and implementing the right process. Now Josh, can you actually talk about how this program can actually be developed in the class? Absolutely. So. There are three aspects to really consider in an extensive reading program. The first one is having plenty of books at the right level. So as you mentioned before, we need a lot of books and they need to be at the right level for the students to read. Secondly, we need to give time and encouragement for the students to do plenty of reading. You want to set aside some time in your class, I imagine, to allow them to read and not pressure them to read too fast or too slow, just allow them to read. Third. Using meaning-focused input and fluency development, just like you talked about, um, using these two strands of the English language learning, you know, that's really going to help them as they move forward with the extensive reading program. Okay, well, these three points actually sound very clear, but can you give us an example how a teacher can implement them in class? Sure. So basically, let's say you have a class of 40 students, okay? 
And if you have a class of 40 students, then you want to have about 50 graded readers. So it allows students to read and at their own pace and then turn them in and check out new books as they finish. So you have a, a surplus of books so students can actually, if some finish before others, they have fresh books to check out. Just having plenty of books at the right level that are various um, types of books, fiction, nonfiction, classic, um, that's really kind of the best way I can describe and how we do this in class. Okay, well, you mentioned class sizes earlier. Um, how does this program actually affect either smaller groups or larger groups? I'm glad you asked that. There are two ways you can do it. You can have an individual program where students individually read by themselves at their own, own pace and own speed. And you also can do a group, a group program where students read as a group and come together as a group to talk about what they've read and exchange ideas and um, you know think about what they've read and, and practice a little bit more and speak. Wow, this actually does sound like a pretty versatile program to be used in the classroom. It is. It's really versatile and there's lots of things you can do. You can use your creativity to change it how you see fit with your students. And um, that's why extensive reading and setting up a program is so beneficial for students. Let's go ahead and talk about the benefits of having an extensive reading program in your school or the classroom. First, it provides a fundamental reading fluency practice for English learners. It then gives an extension and consolidation of vocabulary usage. It develops a more cohesive ability to intentionally control and manipulate grammar structures as well. This all cultivates a strong command over speaking and writing skills. Now, with all academic reasons aside, the cultural and historical events broadens the understanding of the world and provides a larger education for the English language learner. Uh, Josh, we're about to wrap up our episode. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, really sorry. I was just doing some extensive reading, you know, ever since we've been talking about it today. I can't stop reading, and I'm just reading this book about Los Angeles, one of our Compass readers. It's so fascinating. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us this week. We hope you learned a lot about extensive reading, and we hope you can implement it into your classroom. And we'll see you next time right here on English Pop. Hello, everyone. I'm June Lee. I'm Joshua Johnson. And we'd like to thank you for spending your time with us watching our English Pop channel. If you like what you saw, go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to our channel. And please leave your comments below and let us know what you think. And for all our users in China, please visit our YouTube channel. Well, thanks again for your time, and we'll see you again here next time on English Pop. Have a good day.